I'm gonna share with you five of the most popular myths that chronic low back pain sufferers believe to be true. After rupturing my L5-S1 disc, being diagnosed with degenerative discs above that site over 15 years ago, and getting out of all that chronic pain without surgery, stretching, or any kind of injection, I'm gonna expose these myths and give you some different strategies that you can use. If you're new here, my name is William, and I teach chronic low back pain sufferers who have tried everything, they feel stuck, they've been through the medical model in hopes of getting lasting relief, but they're always left in pain. I teach you how to use very simple tools such as mastering your mindset, improving your movements, and building smarter strength to finally overcome the years of pain that you have been in. So that you, you come to the right place. Now, I just mentioned about my personal back pain story. Not many people know that I lived with chronic low back pain for a very, very long time. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a PT, I'm not someone who just kind of is regurgitating information that they spend a lot of money in school uh, learning when it comes to sciatica or chronic low back pain. This is someone who actually lived with chronic low back pain. I do have an education um, in the exercise science space, but I use simple things that I could control to overcome my pain. The problem, now that I look back on the years I was in chronic back pain, I was believing a lot of lies when it comes to what it actually takes to get out of pain. So what I have done and what I do now is I've dedicated my life to teaching people the thing that they can actually control. And a part of that teaching is understanding what is true and what is not when it comes to what you're applying to your body in hopes of getting relief. So if you have seen multiple physical therapists, you've seen multiple chiropractors, maybe you've had multiple injections, you've had multiple surgeries, despite what your background may be in what you've attempted, I want you to really dial into these five myths, these five beliefs around chronic back pain and make sure that you're not falling the lies that they are. The first myth I want to break open is that rest is the best thing for someone who has chronic low back pain, right? Maybe sitting around, laying on ice packs, heating pads, getting home in pain and just laying in bed or being stuck in bed for long periods of time in hopes of if I just kind of calm down, let things settle and just stop using my painful body, that the pain will go away. And that's actually not the case. When it comes to rest and getting out of chronic back pain, it's not more rest that you need. Sure, there are tissues that are irritated. Maybe you're in pain, there's certain activities, maybe a long day of work, a long day of sitting, all increase your symptoms. But swapping that for a life where you're able to just lay around and do nothing isn't the actual cure. You need movement. Movement. Now, it's the type of movement that you have to really dial in on and understand from a pain perspective. So for example, you go in and start exercising. Well, I'm not resting now, now I'm working out. But some of these exercises that you're doing could be too much for your pain system. So when it comes to rest, it's okay to focus on desensitizing your pain system. But what I do inside of my hybrid relief method is I teach you how to desensitize your pain system with activity, with your already active and busy lifestyle. So if you think your body needs more time being horizontal, sleeping with medication flowing through your blood, it is not it. You actually need movement. It's just a matter of finding the right dose and amount of movement that fits your pain profile. Before I move on, I want to speak specifically to the person who is feeling completely worn out by the medical model, who has seen multiple physical therapists. They've seen multiple chiros. Maybe they've had injections. They do a nightly stretch routine. They've been building core strength for Forever. And despite the modality that they use, they still can't get relief. You feel hopeless. You feel like you can't do anything. You've done everything and nothing seems to work. I know when you're looking at the medical model and what they have to offer, it's very limited and you have to fit into their box. And if you don't fit into their box, you're going to be doomed with pain. And I want you to know that it's a very false way of thinking. And I work with people one-on-one -on -one all the time inside of my strength and pain relief accelerator program and show them a different approach to chronic back pain, getting rid of all the things that they've done, that they've tried to do, that have not given them results, make sense of the things that they should be doing, and give them truth behind the things that they should not be doing when it comes to their unique pain profile. So if you feel stuck and you are serious about getting help, right? We're not just kind of playing around with the idea, but you truly want to get to the bottom of where you're at, I might be able to help. My hybrid relief method is what I've been using for years now, walking students who have been in years and years of chronic low back pain through a very specific process that is unique to them, that gives them freedom, that gives them their life back, and allows them a clear path to over 
overcoming years of chronic low back pain. So I don't know if it's gonna work for you or not. What we need to figure this out is have a live conversation. I call them strategy calls. You can go to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash apply. That'll give me a little detail on where you're at and what you're trying to accomplish and whether or not what I do can actually help you. We'll jump on a live call, have a very simple conversation. Um, and it's not for everybody. I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't always work with people. I work with a very specific type of person, but the people who I work with have transformational experiences with their pain in a good way. So if that's you, you feel stuck and you're serious about getting help, go to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash apply. Let's grab a time to chat and we'll see if what I do can actually help you. Second myth is you should be avoiding all forms of exercise. Now I have my opinion on certain exercises or forms of exercise like CrossFit versus powerlifting versus bodybuilding versus functional training, whatever you want to kind of label it as. There's lots of different ways of using and putting a good stress on the body to make it stronger and make it more resilient. But this idea of exercise is not good for a chronic back pain situation isn't true. In fact, you need to use exercise to get the body moving, to get these painful tissues contracting and relaxing, get blood flow going, overcome the fear of movement, overcome the fear of loading the body or stressing the body out when it comes to movement and exercise. But again, it comes back to your own personal pain profile. This is the absolute most important thing that I do with my one-on-one -on -one student is we identify and build out what is their own personal pain profile. And with that pain profile, we identify the exercises and the types of exercises that they should be doing to see the healing that they want, but actually get long-term results. We're not just treating symptoms with movement and exercise, but we're healing the body, building resilience and building strength back in these tissues at a pace that is sustainable for their central nervous system, for their belief system in what they can actually do or what they're afraid or not afraid of doing. So we use the exercise to get the result of pain relief, but not all exercise is created equal. So instead of throwing out exercise saying, oh no, like exercise causes me pain. I always am in pain after my workout, 12 hours, 24 hours, two days later, I've got raging sciatica after my lower body workout. Don't write off exercise altogether. You just need a more structured, more specific approach to movement and exercise that matches your pain profile. Third myth is that back pain is always caused by structural damage. So herniated discs, bulging discs, ruptured discs, arthritis, stenosis, scoliosis, whatever you may have. It's very easy to be told, and I was told this myself, that, oh, you have a ruptured disc. Oh, you've got degenerative disc. This is why you are in pain. And now there's too much research out there and too many examples pointing to people who have structural issues or abnormalities in their spine, and they actually don't have pain. You can actually line up people, um, 10, 20, 30 people, and some of them may have herniated discs and some of them may not. And the people who have herniated discs may or may not have pain. That's now been proven and made an example through research over time. So if we know that herniated discs and bulging discs don't necessarily cause pain, then what does? Well, that's what makes back pain so complex, which is why you can't just go to a PT clinic and say, hey, I've got chronic back pain. And then they say, okay, we're gonna stretch your hip flexors out. We're gonna activate those glutes and we're gonna build that core strength. That's a very blanket approach to a chronic back pain situation. Odds are your core is strong enough. Odds are your glutes glutes work fine. So we have to look at other layers to where pain comes from. Where does our brain, why is our brain sending these signals of pain? How are we responding to these sensations of pain and the multiple levels of pain that we have to deal with? Like there's just more to it than structural damage. There's habits, there's movements, there is your belief system around pain, your belief system around your body. There's kinesiophobia, there's catastrophizing. There's this, uh, what I call a protection mechanism within your body. When you start to experience symptoms, there's a central nervous system response in the body that can trigger pain. So it's not just your core is weak or that your legs aren't strong enough anymore or your disc can't handle any types of load or exercise. There's more to it than that. So when it comes to your chronic back pain, you have to look at it more like of a systemic issue with a systemic approach as in the full system, top to bottom up approach rather than, okay, you have a disc issue. We have to eliminate, we have to cut out, we have to remove that specific disc because once we can do that, then we can guarantee you being pain-free. And it's not the case. It's why people go in for surgery, discectomy, laminectomy, fusion, and they come out just as much in pain or they maybe get some relief for a short period of time, but their pain always comes back or they come out of the surgery even worse. I work with each of these individuals and I've seen it time and time again that they're given bad information, very blanket information, and we are trained to trust the doctors saying, oh no, we, we create
create this fear around this herniated disc, bulging disc, ruptured disc, degenerative discs, and then we create a world of pain and then we expect these white coats to fix us and it's just not the case. Chronic back pain myth number four is you should avoid lifting heavy weight. I cannot count how many times I've had conversations with people who are post-surgery um, or just been diagnosed with herniated discs or they've been in and out of doctors trying to get a solution to their chronic back pain and their doctor literally tells them you shouldn't be lifting anything over 25 pounds or you shouldn't be lifting anything heavier than your purse or your book bag or whatever it might be that is like a basic daily essential carry in your life and it's demoralizing right you feel like you can't do anything you're unable to lift and live a life that you feel like you're able to do because of your weak back so now you're told you're weak that your body is unable to carry anything over an x amount of weight and you believe that to be true and then you start to look at your life and say well this probably weighs more than five pounds or this weighs more than 15 pounds i can't carry groceries anymore i can't lift my own suitcase like i can't rearrange my room anymore or my house because all of these things weigh more than my body can handle and what th that does is it creates a fear around what we can and cannot do right it creates anesthesia where we get become afraid of moving in certain ways or moving with certain amounts of weight because we were told that this weight is going to cause more damage to our spine your body is very very resilient it's very very strong your spine your discs are way stronger than what you have probably been led to believe so if you have been living these past few years trying to stay away from lifting heavy weight and when i say heavy it could be any amount of weight and you've been afraid of the gym afraid of loading your body getting people to do things for you because you're afraid of holding your grandchild or holding your baby because your pain is very very real but now you have a reason for that because your doctor said you shouldn't be carrying anything over 25 pounds and that puts you in this category of being forever damaged or broken or fragile and it's a very very wrong way of thinking and there are so many people that I work with one-on-one -on -one who have created years and years of fear-based movement fear-based beliefs around what they can and cannot do or what their body is actually capable of doing to the point where they are doing crazy things just to keep from lifting or bending or twisting in certain ways your body is capable of carrying weight you're capable of resistance training you're capable of doing things more than just your body weight the problem is you have pain and you have to listen to that pain you have to make decisions based off of what your body is telling you so you can get back to lifting heavier things and building resilience in your body but first you have to overcome the fear of these things build truth back into your body and then slowly work back up to being able to do more with confidence the fifth and final myth that you're probably falling for and I can see as we age we begin to kind of believe this to be true and that is back pain is a part of aging right our spines are breaking down they're becoming more brittle and fragile blowing dust every time we bend over or get up from a chair and it's true but then the pain side is not necessarily true and it's the same situation that we deal with when it comes to believing that herniated discs or bulging discs um, are the reason that we are having pain or why chronic pain sticks around so if science and research has proven that you can have these things and not have pain when it comes to aging you can look at it the exact same way sure you might have less space between your vertebrae you might not have a robust of a spine that you did when you were in your 20s but that doesn't mean that you should be in pain you have to look at it like wrinkles on your skin right as we age our skin becomes less tight right we have these wrinkles we have an aging process to our body that is normal so an easy way for a doctor to kind of just continue to feed you medication and to make money for his pain management practice is to tell you hey you know what you're in your 50s you're in your 60s you're in your 70s you've had a surgery you have an old football injury whatever excuse they might may give you you're aging you're going to be in pain just take these medications once a day and you're going to have your life at least you'll have some sort of quality of life that you can enjoy despite the level of pain that you're in now you become addicted to medication you're taking medication for the rest of your life thinking that oh your spine is fragile and you just begin to spiral and believe all those myths you shouldn't lift heavy you shouldn't exercise you need to rest more and you begin to it's this kind of a tornado of a belief system that just keeps you going around and around and around falling for all these myths because they all feed off of each other and they make sense but it's just not the truth you can be aging you can be getting older and it does not mean that your body should be more and more and more and more in pain okay so if you believe that if you believe that you're in your 50s 60s 70s and you are doomed because you're that age it is not true you can build resilience you can build strength in your body you can overcome the fear of movement you overcome the fear of past injuries overcome the fear and the beliefs that
that your doctor, your surgeon, that one person a long time ago told you about how fragile your spine is, you can overcome these things. It just takes time. It takes rewiring your brain and your body to believe the truth and finding what you can control and then working up from there. I'm not saying if you're seven years old, you should get under a barbell and start squatting as much weight as you can. I don't suggest that. I don't suggest deadlifting as much weight as you can. There are certain movements and exercises that need more attention, especially if you were older or in the older population. But it doesn't mean you can't do them. Find someone who can help you. Find someone who can really teach you specifically at your season of life, what is important when it comes to pain? What should you be doing? What is truth? What is a lie? And then build, regain your life back. Rebuild your body in a way that you can be confident with. So you may find yourself believing one of those myths or maybe all five of them. And the thing is, is one of those myths you could be doing or falling for that could be keeping you in this loop of chronic pain. So again, if you feel stuck, if you feel like the injections aren't working, the PT visits are not working, the chiropractic care is not working, the acupuncture, the PRP injection, the stem cell stuff, all those things you're thinking of or you're trying to make sense of or you're hoping that they're going to work, they're not. And if you want a more simple, more personalized approach, my strength and pain relief accelerator program may be a good fit for you. The only way of knowing that is for us to have a conversation to see where you're at. You can go to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash apply. Please only grab a time for us to chat if you are serious about getting help. There are people who are at their wits end who truly are fed up with the medical model, fed up with experimenting and wasting money. And then there are people who still want to experiment with stem cells and another chiropractor visit or maybe another surgery. This program is not for you if that is you. If you want to continue to pursue the medical model, do that. If you're tired of the medical model, you want help in a different way, go to fitnessrackpain.com forward slash apply. Now, maybe you're not into getting one-on-one -on -one help. You're not ready for that yet. You're not ready to make that kind of investment of your time and your energy. I've got a free guide. Just go to fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash pain free training. I'm going to walk you through the way you should be looking at exercise and moving your body from a strength building perspective that will help alleviate your chronic back pain. If you're an avid exerciser and you enjoy being in the gym, you enjoy working out and, and it makes you feel good, but you're still dealing with chronic back pain. Take a few of these pointers, go to fitnessbackpain.com forward slash pain free training. I'll show you exactly how to structure a workout routine from start to finish, the exercises that you're doing, the warm ups, the core training, everything that involves a perfect back friendly workout. I give it to you absolutely for free. Just go to fitnessbackpain.com forward slash pain free training. Thanks for watching. God bless. And I will see you on the next episode.